<laughs> here. Right here. Your oh, spot cool. will be right there. Great. Yeah. Do you want me to look at you or him? Wherever. Mm -hmm. like. Just over there. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Where are you from? I am from Reno, Nevada. What was your first break? My first break? What do you mean? Sorry. Um, like my first break I will like take a time out break or <laughs> musically. <laughs> oh musically the fir our first break hmm um I I guess I would I mean like our first show maybe that we played we played our first show ever war paint um jeez uh, 2004 maybe at Spaceland that was our first show Sorry, my answers are really long. <laughs> what would you consider your most exciting performance? My most exciting performance? Um, hmm. Wow, that's hard. There's been a f there's been a lot. We've been uh, on tour for a while. I would say any time that we go to South America or Mexico City, because the the audience just goes bonkers and it's really fun. How do you feel about this career? I feel I feel lucky to be doing what I love. Yeah. How did you decide to become a musician? I had always grown up. I mean, I grew grew up playing music kind of on and off, like piano a little bit, singing some, like I did choir in elementary school, but I didn't take anything really seriously and then I turned I it was like my around my 19th birthday. I was home visiting um I went back to Reno to visit because I'd already moved to LA and I wanted to play an instrument and I didn't feel like playing drums because it seemed too involved and I didn't really have any desire to play guitar so I decided to play bass. And my friend had a bass for me and he had a practice amp so it kind of worked out perfectly. How would you describe your specialty or style? My specialty or style? I would say that um, maybe a little funky. <laughs> a little funky, maybe fluid, groovy. So I like really parent parental words to describe some music, but I guess that's yeah. That's how I do it. Who is your favorite musician who you look up to? My favorite musician who I look up to. That's hard. Um, well, I love Bernard Edwards. He's a bass player. Um, he's not alive anymore, but I really, really, really love his bass playing. Uh, ja Wobble is also a bass player. Um, I love Susie Sue. Um, Robert Smith's guitar playing is pretty amazing. Um, God, the list goes on. I'll just, that's four. <laughs> <laughs> what would your ideal job be? My, mm, my ideal job, I feel like I'm doing it. Um, but if I wasn't a musician, then I would probably be mad at just something with art and painting, making clothes. I like to do that stuff on the side or cutting hair. I like cutting hair. <laughs> <laughs> do you consider yourself to be lucky? Yes, I do. I feel like, I mean, you know, I guess luck is relative. I, I worked pretty hard to be where I'm at, but I'm, I feel lucky in the sense that I get to do what I love to do. What advantages do you have? What advantages do I have? Ah, these questions are funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot, what advantages do I have? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. Um, I would say maybe I'll just talk about the, I just put out a solo record and I think maybe the advantage I have with that project is that I've already sort of become somewhat established in another band. So I think I have an advantage with that. At least people know, you know, have an idea who I am, mm -hmm. which is nice when you're starting out something new. Would you rather have a car or a diploma? Whoa. <laughs> a car or a diploma? <laughs> Shoot. I mean, I don't have a diploma and I haven't had a diploma for so many years now, so I don't really know what that feels like. I do have a car and I do love my car. Shoot. 
I guess because I've had a car for so long and I haven't had a diploma, I'll change it up. I'll have a diploma for this round of life. What do you think about the need for instant gratification? <laughs> um, what do I think about it? I, I am a, I'm a person who very much needs instant gratification. I think I always have been. So, you know, um, what do I think about it? Well, it can be frustrating when that's kind of how you live your life or that's what your expectations are because you don't always get instant gratification, obviously. Um, I think meditate. I think meditation help with the instant gratification or the need for instant gratification. How do you feel about how interconnected the world is becoming? Um, I think it's great. I think that it's it's a wonderful thing that everybody has access to so many things and so many things that are happening, so much music, like we didn't have that when we were growing up. I think people sort of look down on it, but I don't know, the kids now, you know, 10 year olds now versus when I was 10 are like crazy, crazy smart, super intelligent, have access to all kinds of information. I think, I think it's good. What does the future look like to you? The future, I, I don't know what the future looks like to me. I have always been a person who, I can't, I've never been able to project like, where's your five year, five year goal? Like, or you know, what's your five year plan, your 10 year plan? Ever since I was little, I never could see past a certain point. Um, I know what today looks like, kind of, never know. And tomorrow, the week, and that's sort of all I can handle, I think. Otherwise, I start to get a little nuts. How do you feel about having children? I, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'll have children. I think I thought about adopting maybe later on in life, but I feel like right now I like my time and I like the things that I'm doing with my time. You know, I haven't had them yet, so... I don't know if I'm going to. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll, you know, watch a show or like friends of mine will be pregnant. I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Like the pregnancy part looks nice. But then, you know, I'm not sure. What, I'm sure if I had a kid, I would be overjoyed, but it's not. I don't know. I'm just not sure if it's going to happen. What challenges do you feel the world is facing today? What challenges? Oh, God, lots of challenges. Um, I think that every person, at least challenges that I can sort of understand and, and have a grasp on. I think everybody just, every person in the world chases, uh, chases faces personal, personal challenges, um, internal conflicts, either, you know, people aren't very happy or they've got issues that they need to deal with and work out. And I feel like it all starts and stems with each person individually. And I think that's like the, the main the main problem, obviously, just like how people feel about themselves. And then obviously that uh, expands into a greater evil or, you know, a large mass of destruction. But I think it starts with ourselves. What is your favorite way to communicate? Mm, my favorite way to communicate? Well, I love talking, but I have to say, as annoying as texting is, it's also so like, just get to the point. It's really easy. You don't have to like, you know, say you're arguing with someone. <laughs> it's obviously pretty silly to have an argument by a text, but it's also kind of nice because there's a barrier there. And if you were talking to that person in person, you know, maybe people would be raising their voices or you'd get more defensive. And you know, there's also the flip side, which things can get lost in translation by a text. But I, I think that it's, it's very, uh, it's convenient and it's handy and I don't know, you can get to the point quicker. Sometimes when you're writing things down, you can you work out what you're actually trying to say. What do you think of the creative scene in Los Angeles? I, what do I think of the creative scene? Um, I think, I don't really, I haven't really thought of that. Although since moving here, since I'm from Reno, I moved here in 99, I definitely have you know, didn't really exercise any of my, like, creative abilities when I was growing up in Reno. I had a lot of energy, but I wasn't really doing anything with it. And the minute I moved here, I felt like, oh, this is, I felt like I could do pretty much anything. Um, 
yeah, I feel like this is a, a city, I'm sure there's, you know, obviously every city has that, but because it's mm -hmm. so big and it's based around the entertainment industry, which is creative based, I feel like there's a lot of creative energy flowing and it's sort of like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. And anybody can kind of do anything. Like if they want to change their career tomorrow, they could. Um, I think that's good. It's nice to have options and it's also inspiring. What is your favorite book, film, and music right now? Book, film, and music. I'm reading, let's see, I just started The Untethered Soul. I'm only like 30 pages into it, but it's a it's like a self-help book. It's really nice. Um, I am currently, I just, just I, had, I did heard of her, but I hadn't actually ever listened to her music. Sharon Van Etten, I believe her name is. And her last record that she put out, I think it's called Are We There? Anyways, that's been on a heavy rotation, along with uh, Barbra Streisand and Barry Gibb, uh, the album Guilty, which is also really good. What was the other one? Movie? Um, shoot, I'm an episodic person, but let's see. What's the last movie that I watched that I really loved? Um, crap. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just throw out a favorite movie, my Saturday Night Fever, Muriel's Wedding, Held and Maude. Um, what did I watch recently that I hadn't ever seen? Uh, Shirley, Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lennon. Is this Jack, what's his name? Do you know his name? Jack, um, oh God, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I think it's called The Apartment. Yeah. Jack Lemon is his name. Yep, so there's some movies. <laughs> <laughs> Chatty Kathy over here. <laughs> We're done. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you.